Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick way you can paint miniature models, particularly what I like to call micro scale models, such as this one. The painting rules in this tutorial for this scale, which is 1676, could be applied to anything from 164 all the way down to 6mm and even 350 scale, which is as small as a grain of rice. Now the reason why this type of painting for this this micro scale is good is because you can get away with little imperfections on these on this size miniature because the eye cannot really focus on those. So the advantage is you can paint more models in less time as opposed to painting bigger figures and having to worry about blending in blending and and transitioning the colors smoother so that the eye can see it. So to begin, I primed everything in black and gave it a zenithal highlight. If you don't have an airbrush, you can always dry brush with either a gray and white onto your model's surface areas just to help you pinpoint all those details that you want to add the highlights at the end. Now that my model is primed and dry, ready for paint for base coating, I want to first talk to you about where this model came from. And as many of you might see, this is a direct inspiration from Indiana Jones. I took the model from Airfix's World War II 172nd scale Gurkhas, and these guys have that tropical uh, explorer uniform, and I felt they were the best to, to use as a direct reference to add on to make a character that looks like Indiana Jones. Moving on to the colors I will use to paint this model, I apply all of them on my wet palette and I will zoom in to show you how I dilute the paint in every step. Ideally you don't want the paint to be too wet or too dry so you have to do a little bit of trial and error and this is something you have to practice on your own until you find that sweet spot of consistency that allows you to apply paint thick enough to stick on the model but thin enough that it won't clog all your details. This is me speaking from the future. You will notice later in the video some of the colors I chose at, at the beginning on the model have changed and that's because personal preference I wanted him to look a bit more like Indiana Jones rather than some random character or wannabe so just keep that in mind the colors change but the rules are the same here's a useful tip I had to learn the hard way many years ago when you're painting or adding thin layers on your model let each layer dry before you continue with the next if you don't, what's gonna happen is, you will never let the paint that you apply first dry enough so that when you pass the, the brush the second time, it, the layer of paint on your brush will pull the one that you already applied and it will basically ruin the job. So you will have to clean that off and reapply the paint again. That, by letting the paint dry, it will save you from at least two or three extra minutes of repainting. More often than not, painting models is a bit frustrating when you're a perfectionist and you don't want to leak paint from one part to the other. But I'm here to tell you that it's okay. You can always fix that by simply finishing the application you're doing and then go back with the other colors and tidy up all those imperfections before you proceed to the mid-tones and highlights. Once you add your washes and your tones, those little imperfections will also be able to hide. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, models this scale or smaller are easy to paint because you can get away with those little imperfections. So don't stress too much about that, enough that it's gonna take away the fun experience that you're supposed to have. I don't recommend using a fine needle brush because 
Those bristles don't hold on to the moisture of the paint long enough to keep the paint moist. The paint will dry on the tip of the brush and that will cause you more problems. Use a medium sized brush that can keep the, the, paint, the paint's life a little longer and your paint won't dry up on you as quicker. As you can see the size of the brush I'm using is not a tiny brush, but it's also not a huge one. It's a middle size uh, bristle brush, good enough to be able to give me that lifespan that I want before the paint dries from the palette to the model. At this point you can see I changed the colors on the model, but the applications were the same. Now I will proceed to adding some washes before adding the midtones and highlights. And at this point, before moving on to the next steps, I'll go around the model and make sure I try to clean up as much imperfections as I can. Using washes and inks is a matter of personal choice, and when it comes to miniatures, I like to use different colored wa washes and inks to create different effects on the model. For example, anything that's closed, of any material such as leather and fabric, I always go with a darker tone because it gives me the opportunity to go back with the base coat and use the base coat colors as the mid-tone. Using Agrax Earthshade, I'm giving a second wash to give a bit more of a darker look to my clothes on the model and this will help brighten up those layers once I start applying the midtones. As always, the rule of thumb is let one layer of paint, wash or inks dry before you apply another one. For the skin, I will use a Rayclan flesh shade, and this will be applied on the jointed areas, such as between the elbows or forearms and biceps, the wrist, and on the side of the cheeks. As my second wash for the skin, I will use a red wash and I will apply this underneath where there is more shadow. So underneath every part as well as the jointed areas as well and on the side of the cheeks a bit more towards the back of the head. Adding a red wash to any skin tone will give you the illusion that the model is alive. There is blood circulation in the body of that miniature and it creates a really cool effect once you add all the other skin tones to brighten up the overall look. Now that all my washes are applied and dry, I will add the midtones and highlights. Applying midtones and highlights is the same as when we did the base coat. The paint should still be the same consistency and all you have to do is just add a few layers at a time letting each layer in between dry and you will get that really nice transition without having to put too much effort in worrying about blending. So what I'm doing is going back with the same base coat colors and adding them as my midtones and from there I go and lighten up each color to create those highlights.
The only way one can get good at anything is by practice, trial and error. You fail once, you pick it up and keep trying again. Nobody is born with a skill. Skills of the, are developed over time throughout the years. I've been doing this hobby for 20 years now, so it is easy for me to pick up a brush and paint anything, as opposed to somebody who's just new in the hobby. But that does not mean you, could be, you cannot become good. Just keep practicing, be consistent, and don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Just focus on having fun, enjoying the craft, and learning as you go. And you will be successful, not only in this craft, but in anything else you do in life. All of the steps and tips I'm giving you in this video, I once learned them from other people who I looked up to when I started. So I hope I am an inspiration to you, as those folks were an inspiration to me. Making my own mistakes and coming up with my own techniques, I was able to add to the knowledge that I received from the veterans in the field. And I know you can as well. So just pick up a model, take your paints, and go at it. We live in the golden era of information. For every one category, there are at least a million videos and articles to teach you how to do it. So don't be afraid. I don't want to sound like a philosopher here, but the only fear you should have is the fear of missing out. Not of purchasing stuff, but of trying things. Things that get you out of your comfort zone and help you grow as an individual. Painting models in this scale is not usually something a lot of folks like to do, but it is definitely a learning experience, and you will see how much fun you can have with such a small scale. For the skin, I, I usually add two or three lighter tones in this scale, and I go back and add a bit more red wash to the uh, cheeks or under the, the chin, just to emphasize more on the shadows. And after I do that, I go back with the base coat, thin it down to a translucent consistency, and pass it throughout the entire skin parts of the, of the model. This helps create a thin layer of skin just like we humans have, and it helps tie in all those colors together. And because this model is so small, you won't be able to really see all those transition lines because of that layer that I applied at the end. With one final lighter tone, I clean up a little bit of those uh, wash tones that probably went over the parts that I didn't want before I add my liquid skin layer. Once again, here's the base coat. I will dilute it down very thinly and apply it to all the skin. The 
skin is done, now I will finish the rest of the body. For the highlights, I always like to add a little, a little tip of my brush in glaze medium and mix it with the, the lighter tone just to give me a softer uh, application but it is not really something you have to do it's just I like using the glaze medium because it softens up the pigments and they apply a bit smoother I'm using a technique called pointillism which is adding tiny little dots to create your highlights and this is just to give the illusion of worn out clothes or a specific type of texture uh, a thread or, or a garment to make it look worn out or used. This technique is effective for models that are painted in the Wild, in the Wild West era or anything grimdark. So you should try it next time you're painting a model or miniatures in those type of genres. So if you try this out, which I highly recommend, take your time and you will really see the effects once you add the other tones and the highlights. With one final highlight, I will emphasize on the knees and some of the parts of the clothes that are a bit more wrinkled but sticking out closer to the surface or where the light source is at and I call it done. After doing the same for all the other parts, my model is now completed. Adding a varnish is very important to preserve the paint job that you work so hard to create. And just like that, in about an hour, I was able to paint up this miniature model to look really good on both the table or any display you may have. In terms of varnishes, I highly recommend AK Interactive's matte varnish, which you can, which you can apply with a paintbrush or an airbrush. If you don't want to do that, you can always buy Krylon's um, matte varnish and apply thin layers of that and that should do the job as well. As mentioned before, this character is directly inspired by Indiana Jones. He is part of a project I'm currently working on about an adventurer slash archaeologist slash treasure hunter who is on a quest on this secret island looking for an artifact that it is believed to have the code to immortality. With his vast knowledge of ancient cultures, quirky tools, and escape tactics, this explorer has to find a way to get out of this island alive. Heavily guarded by descendants of an ancient culture who have rigged this place with all sorts of booby traps since the time of the conquistadors. As always, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you on the next episode.